Thank you, and can I can I thank all the deputies for their for their contributions, and um, I'll happily try and uh, respond to issues that have been that have been raised. I mean, the first thing I want to say is that um, is that Ireland can't stand still when it comes to defence and security. You know, we 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 can't build a a wall around our our island and just pretend that we don't see what's going on in the rest of the world. You know, uh, no, 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 sorry. Let me let me answer specifically, Deputy, the uh, the, um, the issues that, that you've raised and others have raised. You can't, on the one hand, praise the Irish Defence Forces for their uh, for their peacekeeping work, and at the same time prevent them from training with other countries across Europe on projects that they choose to be involved in to upgrade their own capacity to be better peacekeepers and better soldiers uh, and defence force personnel. So the, 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 the four projects that I'm asking for this House to support at the moment are projects that the defence forces have chosen. The defence forces came to me to recommend that, that these are projects that we have been observers on to date and they think there would be a significant benefit in terms of capacity and training and upskilling should we move to full participation. That's what we're debating today, not neutrality. And I agree with the Deputy, we need to have a debate on these broader issues. I'm happy to have that. And I have clear views in relation to, um, uh, to how that debate should evolve and so on. And I hope we'll, we'll be able to have some of that debate, although resourcing of our defence forces is also a slightly different debate to, to neutrality, how you define it and what you want for the future. I am not proposing to this House that Ireland move away from our position of non-military alignment. I will be proposing to government next week that we adopt uh, a very ambitious, I think, um, series of recommendations in response to the Commission report, which is very loyal to the report, actually. Uh, I, I hope that will be possible, Deputy. Right? And if not, we'll have a long debate on this, I hope, in September, October. Um, um, because these are important issues. They're not going to go away. They'll be as big in September as they are now. So this isn't a party political issue, uh, and, it, and it, it, it shouldn't be seen as something that needs an, an instant debate now. These are issues that are not going to go away. Um, the security landscape on our continent, unfortunately, is changing because of raw aggression and brutality coming from the East, coming from Russia into Ukraine. That is changing how every country in the European Union views their security and defence capacity and the partnerships that they need. I mean, Finland and Sweden, and I've had this debate with, with Finnish and Swedish ministers at length over the last 10 years. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, the support for joining NATO in Finland was somewhere between 20 and 25 percent, consistently, for decades. But they feel a threat to their own security right now which has changed that perspective, and understandably so. If we were geographically located where Finland is, I think we'd be having the same debate. And we wouldn't be talking about the ideology of neutrality and so on. So we are, we are fortunate in where we happen to be geographically on the planet. We have natural protection given where we are in terms of the Atlantic on one side uh, and the United Kingdom on the other. Um, and we don't have many natural enemies uh, at least in a conventional way, from a, from a security and military perspective. We, of course, have threats, as we've seen in terms of cyber, cyber threats and so on. But can I just say, this is not a debate about neutrality. This is a, ba a debate about the resourcing of our defence forces and how we can enhance that in terms of opportunities to operate with other countries who have also opted in voluntarily to these projects so that we can work together to make sure that our troops are safer when they're abroad, that we have a better skill set uh, in terms of responding to what's asked of them. And to somehow, uh, um, you know, quote neutrality in a way that actually uh, suggests that we shouldn't be working with other friendly countries, that we're working with on all sorts of other things to enhance our own capacity and skill set, to my mind, is extraordinary that that would be the case. Um, and that seems to be, I still don't know, by the way, whether Sinn Féin are actually supporting these PESCO projects or not. Are, are you supporting them this evening? I don't know. Um, I, I mean, because if you support the Defence Forces, they want them. And they feel safer, they feel safer on, uh, uh, on the back of doing them. I mean, the idea that, that, that we would say that we shouldn't be involved in a project that is about cyber threats and incident response information, a sharing platform with other countries, three or four other countries, 
The idea that we shouldn't be involved in training and working with other countries to make sure that we are better prepared for disaster relief capability. I mean, if, God forbid, there was a, a natural disaster in North Africa today that killed thousands of people, and you would all be calling on me to respond, just like people responded positively when, when we sent a ship to the Mediterranean to respond to the, uh, to the plight of migrants in the Medi Mediterranean. The idea that we can actually train with other countries to make sure that we have the capacity to do that, and we choose to do it Thank ourselves, you, is the issue. In relation to you know, Special Operations Forces Medical Training Centre, we have uh, you know, Army Ranger Wing um, uh, personnel in Mali as we speak, in a very complex and difficult mission. Thank you, Minister. Uh, and the, uh, and I'll finish now. The idea that actually we wouldn't offer them the opportunity to improve medical training capacity to my mind, it is extraordinary. <clears throat> to, to tie that up in an, in an ideological debate around neutrality is, is just not where this debate should be. And Thank likewise, you. in terms of mine countermeasures, likewise in relation to mine countermeasures, if we were called upon or if we were asked by the UN to be part of, of an agreed international mission to help get grain out of Odessa uh, at some point in the next number of months, Minister, we're well do you think we time. should train to have the capacity to be able to say yes to that ask? I think we should. And I don't think we should be isolating ourselves from the benefit of that kind of training. That's what PESCO is about. These are voluntary projects Thank you, where we train with other countries to improve the skill set and the capacity of our defence forces. Nothing more and nothing less. We'll have the debate on these broader issues around capacity, resourcing, reform, uh, expansion of our defence forces, you, well and of course uh, the neutrality debates also. I look forward to those. But let's focus tonight on what we're being asked to actually make a decision on, which is to give the Defence Forces the opportunity to train with other countries you, to improve their skill sets.